We're also getting a mediocre film. A mediocre film? <laughs> By mediocre, mediocre film productions. Yeah, thanks for that. Turn it off, turn it off for a minute. Uh, there's no milk. I'm sorry. Sorry, dude. Uh, okay, so I was over here farting, if I remember correctly. Morning, Mark. How are you? <laughs> I'm pissed off, Al. Really? Why? Because I effed up. Ah, uh, what did you do? I did. I had the wrong settings on the camera, so all that comedy gold that you just did in slow motion didn't yeah. have any sound. Ah. Uh, so uh, do it again. Uh, well, I've had a bit of a shave. Yeah. This is the uh, yeah. So. Uh, Basically, I just thought I looked and I, I looked like a wild man, and the the image I'm trying to portray is a thinking man, a thinker. Yeah, and, a, you so know, a Socrates, a beard, a beard stroker. You yeah. know, hmm. Yeah. Or I just look like early '90s uh, Cypress Hill. Were you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm local? Insane in the membrane. Oh, good. <laughs> cool. So, uh, where are we today? Right, the Dorosaurus. The door. We've got a couple of coats of finish on there. We've got, uh, we're using a new product, um, actually. We're using a catalyzed lacquer this time round. Um, so instead of the pre-catalyzed lacquers we've been using before, this is one that you have to mix, and we'll see that later on, but we're really pleased. We've got our two coats on the inside of the door, one coat on the outside of the door. But that's all dry, so we can continue. Um, do you want to have a little look at the bits? I've already been? shot those. Have you already shot These those? These things. Okay, yeah. So Here. we've got our key escutcheons we can't fit because we're fitting the lock that's on the door on site. First job, let's fabricate up the grill. So, we did have to move the project on, so essentially what have we done? We've taken, let me just pull a little piece out for all you YouTube. Nice and concise as always there, Watson. Yeah, we take Start a... Start a sentence and then just drone just tail off. tail off, tail off. Yeah. We've taken some ordinary half inch stick mild steel bar. Yo, yo. Hey, hey, hey. We cut four of these out. Two of these we marked up and we drilled, like so, partially through. Okay. Uh, and then actually we changed our mind because this was proving a bit problematic to kind of fit. So one side, let me show you. We drilled all the way through. Bit of texture on there as well. Okay. Okay. Then we cut out these little tabs. You can see those. Um, why I welded them on is because it's just boring to watch. It's a load of grinding to shape and it's just a bit dull. So what did we cut the... Um... Oh, what did we cut the uh, little tabs out of this? Which is... I can't even remember what this is. Uh, it is 3 mil by 25. So 3 by 25. We drilled them all, cut them out rounded them off little radius. Why did we do it like this? Well, because we want the grate or the grill to sit half inch proud of the door. So those tabs are going to be let into the door. So just the tabs will be let in, which will still give that feeling that the whole thing's into the wood and in part of the wood, but 
this is going to stand proud. Okay, we then cut a load of a uh, length of 6mm bar, again mild steel, nine of those, nice and easy. Uh, but first job this morning is to weld this together, make sure we get it all nice and straight, make sure we get the pieces in the right way. So what we need to do, ironically, is these are really quite a good joint and we need to uh, create some space in there for our weld to sit in. Straight into it, straight into the grinding. Just a flat disc and better put on some safety kit. And so I'm just going to put a little chamfer on the end of uh, where are my ear protections. If you could possibly look crazier it would be impossible. <laughs> really? Oh they're there, fucking hell. Right okay, let's. let's... see you all right so there we go simple as that strangely you cut them you get them so neat and then you have to kind of make a mess so what you can see there is we've just made a little space for the weld to sit in okay okay weld's got to weld's got to go somewhere too so this is just a little welding unit that uh, used to use quite regularly actually, but we've got the big one now, so I don't use it that often. But it is in here, and it does work, so we will use it. What's up? Start again. Start again from? From the top. Uh, with shit. those bits, sorry. I'm so sorry. Initially what I did is we drilled three quarters of the way through this bar, using the pillar drill and our depth gauge on there. And what we did is we pop these together like this, pop that in there, holes are quite tight, pop that one on top. And of course trying to get nine of those bars to fit like that was a total pain. Um, and also why I scrapped this was one set of my holes are out. One of these pairs is not like the others. Yeah. So it just it was a bit sloppy. Um, I also struggled like hell to get, I'm going to get rid of those so we don't confuse the issue. So what did we do? We adapted. Um, we've taken one exactly the same, we've drilled three quarters of the way through. We've taken this one, we've drilled all the way through. So what this allows us to do is this. It allows us to go through the top and into the bottom. So let's... Uh, and then how are you sealing it at the top? Uh, then what we're going to do is, because that will be sat like that, or those will be sat like that. Let's get a couple in there just to show you. So they won't poke through, so what we'll do is we'll just plug weld over the top. Nice. Without any further ado... Let's weld. Let's weld. Well, it's recording. Okay. It's recording something. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that's why, because that's sat out. Honest to so, Zoink. Max, Max. Gas is on. This welder is such a piece of crap. <laughs> why do we use the good welder? Because I'm lazy. Because I'm fundamentally lazy. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. to do across the back here. 
Perfect. Taking the time to get it square hair. Before we're having to pull this too far out, we are going to just tack a tongue of this in as well. Tack a tongue of the thing to the thing. Sweet Uncle Al, the boss of this. Yeah. Sweet Uncle Al, what you doing, sweet guy? Weldy weldy bang bang. You weren't looking at that, were you, Mark? No. Good. The second part of any welding enterprise is grinding off the weld. <laughs> okay, where are we? So what we need to do is just the smallest amount of hand filing. You could do some speed, super fast mo. I think you're lucky if I'm recording it. Well, I think we are today, aren't we? Ooh. On Reddit, someone said, oh, I look forward to seeing how you're going to get the bars in. You're looking forward to this? <laughs> it's just quite boring. So because they're tight in the bottom, what we're going to do is, I'm making sure, because I've put a slight chamfer, just with a grinder, I've just gone round there, just means that what we're going to do now is just give those a little tappity tap tap. A little tap. Is that making any difference? Yeah, it's just pushing them in. Yeah. Stopping that rattle. Because they're getting glued across the top, in theory the bottom will be loose. So we want them tight into that hole. They won't go anywhere. Anyway, more weldy, weldy, bang, bang. Welding. Welding. Let me see. Okay. Welding. 
Welder. 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 Okay, there you go. You can get in there and have a little look what we've done if you like. So it's showing that the gas wasn't flowing. But there you go. Oh. Oh shit. There's always one f isn't there? Don't know what to do about that. Hmm. Stick a little weld in there. You'll see it though and we won't be able to grind it out. Won't you? No. I touch it? No, it'd be red hot. That would have been the perfect... <laughs> oh, there's a bit of mark on your grill. <laughs> there's a mark on my grill. What are you going to do about that then? I don't know mate. I just don't bloody know. I think first off... Stick a paper clip in there or something. Well, we could epoxy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want... Can't you MacGyver it? Well, we'll see. Right. Here's the interesting bit. I want to kind of try and, well, actually what we'll do is we'll wire brush first. Okay. I wonder if we can just, just this might be a bit ear, ear achy. What are you doing? See if we can cold. Just do a little bit of texturing over those bits. Oh yeah, okay. Wow, a little bit hot. If you bought a product, you might as well use it, hey Watson? Hey, hey, hey. Look, Al spent money on stuff and he's using it. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to warm it up. What have we got here? Have we got a little brush? There is our brush. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, that was the right thing to do, wasn't it? Yeah, look at those colours. Yeah, I can live with that, can't you? Yeah, that's 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 matched it back in, hasn't it?
absolutely black that as well. And what is that? That is the keep for the sliding bolt. See all the water's just did you see all the water kind of evaporating off that take that back to a nice dark color okay they all match right so I think now what we need to do what do you think do you think that's that's done it hasn't it mate it looks amazing yeah hold it up nicely for me hold it still Uh, next step arenos. Wow. Yeah, we're going to put a little drop of epoxy in that. So the next step, let's go and offer it up and get it cut in. Are you ramping that ISO, Holmes? Okay, so this is the outside of Eldor Areno. And what we just have to make sure we've got is equally spacey. So what we're looking for is that this is um, nicely Kevin, spacied. <laughs> can't go there. No, I know we Too can't. Too soon. Yeah. This is the outside of the door, this yes? This is the outside, yes. Yeah. And this has had Uno coat of lacquer. This side's had one coat, the other side's had Dos Kotos. Dos Kotos. Dos Kotos. So how much more has it got? I think we'll get another kind of couple, two or three. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be moving on to that today, actually. Oh. If you insist. So you're marking this out to let in. How deep are you letting it in? Just the depth of those uh, washers? Just the depth of these lugs. Lugs, they're called. Well, I'd call them lugs. Right. Okay. And it is my thing, Mark, this, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm just going to get the... Uh... <laughs> to the El Topo. First time. Go on, fit in your basket. Oh, it's so close. I think, well, I mean, we're almost, we're almost dropping in, but we're not quite. Okay. Sense of reluctance to get the chis chis out. Yeah, chis chis are so old hat. I like to smash things with timber. I'm, I'm what you used to be, what what people used to call and love a wood butcher. You're a brute. Oh, it's fitting. It fits. So the top part of the outside of the door. And then, uh, so what we're we doing here? So we've got our copper rivets. You've seen us make these before. And if you haven't, get watching our entire back catalogue. So we're just going to take a little measure -mej of those. What's that coming up at? Practically six. So what's this drill bit here? Five and a half. So that means we're going to be gripping on quarter of a half a mil of grip on each thing. So on each of these, these will be tight for the hole. So I think they'll work. So what we're going to do now is just gently lift that out. First portion here. Just here. Al's favourite part of the day. <sighs> Burning. Burning stuff. Right. 
Okay, so what we're going to do... Okay. Okay, is that one done? Yeah. So we need that black mark to disappear. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, nice and tight. Yep. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. No, no. No, no. No, 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 no. no, no. no. We're really showing our age there. What was that? There we go, and that one isn't actually bang on, but... I'm just going to widen these a touch. Look at that, nice and flush. Looks the part, doesn't it? It does. Okay, here we go. So we'll do one over here. Cool. Okay, perfect. What next? So what we're doing is just taking this door, this finish, back down with a triple zero steel wool, denibbing it, staying away from the metal work. So it's just taking off any kind of nibs, any little bits of dust that have settled on it overnight as it's drying in the filthy garage here. So get all that crap brushed off so this is essentially 5% sheen lacquer mix it 9 to 1 first thing to do with this because this is really high solid levels is get all that kind of all the solids off the Now I already know roughly what a coat looks like on this door, so, and I'm only doing this by eye, it's the thing with catalysts as a general rule, and they're quite forgiving. Okay, so that's meant to be 10%. So this is essentially, it'll look like a finish, but it's very dry, I think it'll suit a front door really well and it's harder wearing than the catalyzed lacquers um, so it's kind of resin based so it kind of gets into all the nooks and crannies and seals I've been quite generous over the um, butterfly ties because this will kind of seep into all those gaps and almost glue the butterfly ties in place as well as kind of paint as well as protect the timber so the fronts had one coat the backs had two coats so by the time we finish we'll have four or five coats on this I think because we want it to look good in the short term. And then re-coating, I mean, I'd say this door one's kind of looking at every three, four years using this product. So that's all the bubbles have gone. Put that down there in my keeping place. So it's already had one coat, so it's not kind of sticking in, it's not sucking it in overly hard or aggressively. Broad strokes. It's the joy about painting a door flat, you don't get the runs. Being a little bit generous about around the butterfly ties. And you can see how that's matched in that stuff that we've just sanded back. Now the client wants a rust finish on this, but I'm 
managed to persuade them to essentially have the door lacquered over all the steel components and then really what we're going to be doing is over the next kind of 18 months just letting the escutcheonry and all the additions, all the steel additions just kind of settle in on their own. So they're getting lacquered over to protect them, protect them initially but you know kind of five years down the line this door will probably look quite different and hopefully it'll look like it's meant to look which is as we always say, what are we going to say Mark? 300 years old. It's quite a stunning thing. As a front door, it's uh, people are going to certainly notice it, aren't they? Yeah, those copper rivets in there are wicked. They look good, don't they? They do. It's almost like you know what you're doing. Well, you know what? I think it's just coming together. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm looking down the door, uh, just getting the light right. For the drippage just to see if there's any drippage. Not only do they get a nice door, they're also getting a mediocre film. A mediocre film? <laughs> By mediocre, mediocre film productions com. Yeah, thanks for that. It's getting there, isn't it? It's making me want one for a front door. Yeah. Everybody will want one. Let's hope so. So I need all my stupid kit on now. Oh, let's think what we're going to do. Mm. Oh. Mm. It does aid thinking, Mark. You should grow one. 